Open Banking is a recently developed financial model that allows third-party developers to build applications and services on top of traditional banking systems. Now, this approach has been successful in other parts of the world, and now many African countries are starting to explore the potential of open banking. Now, some say that open banking is the most significant game changer since the mobile money revolution took the continent by storm. With a sizable pool of unbanked and underbanked customers eager for innovative, safe, and secure financial services, Africa's current informal sector is a perfect location for fintech innovation. Additionally, the African market is an almost perfect marketplace to profit from open banking and open finance due to its immense size and diversity. So in this video, we'll explore the potential of open banking to transform Africa's financial landscape, discuss the current state of open banking in Africa, and explore some of the challenges and opportunities facing this emerging industry. Let's jump in. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy and if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so because on this channel I speak about fintech, digital transformation, personal and career development. Open banking is a system that allows banks and other financial institutions to share financial data with third-party providers such as fintech companies in a secure and standardized way. Sharing data this way allows for the development of new financial products and services that can improve the customer experience and create new opportunities for innovation and competition. For example, imagine you're a big spender who loves to shop online, you have a habit of splurging on the latest designer clothes and accessories, but you struggle to keep track of your spending and often find yourself running out of money before the end of the month. Enter open banking. With the personal finance management app that leverages open banking APIs to link your bank account, you can track your spending and set a budget for your shopping habits. A great example of a product that was created by leveraging open banking is UK-based personal finance management tool called Emma. Now, Emma is able to provide users with a comprehensive view of their financial situation by accessing their bank account data through open banking API. This means that users can see all their transactions in one place, regardless of which bank or credit card they're using. And Emma also offers budgeting tools that help users to set financial goals and track their progress over time. Now, one of the unique features of Emma is its ability to analyze user spending habits and provide personalized insights and advice. For example, if Emma notices that a user is spending too much money on dining out, it might suggest a cheaper alternative or recommend a recipe for a home-cooked meal. Overall, Emma is a great example of how open banking can be leveraged to create innovative and useful financial products that benefit consumers. Now, open banking originated in the European Union where it was first introduced as part of the Revised Payment Services Directive or PSD2 in 2015. The PSD2 was designed to create a more competitive and innovative payment market in the EU by increasing the security of online payments and promoting the use of new technologies. One of the key provisions of PSD2 was the requirement for banks to provide third-party providers with access to their customers' financial data through API. Now, this requirement allowed fintech companies and other third-party providers to develop new financial products and services that could improve the customer experience. Now, since the introduction of PSD2, open banking has spread to other regions of the world, including the United Kingdom, Australia, Hong Kong, and now Africa. Although open banking is still in its early stages in Africa, there are already many exciting developments happening across the continent. Africa is a vast and diverse market with over 1.4 billion people in 54 countries. But despite the many natural resources and human potential, Africa has historically struggled with economic development and access to financial services. Now, according to the World Bank's Global Findex report, as of 2021, 45% of adults aged 15 years and over in sub-Saharan Africa are unbanked. The lack of access to financial services can have a major impact on people's lives, limiting their ability to save, invest, and participate in the economy. Open banking has the potential to address some of these challenges by enabling a more open and competitive financial ecosystem. By allowing third-party developers to build applications and services on top of traditional banking systems, open banking can increase innovation, reduce costs, and improve financial inclusion. For example, 
Open banking can make it easier for small businesses and entrepreneurs to access financing by providing more data and transparency for the lenders. It can also enable new forms of digital payments which can increase access to financial services for marginalized groups. And while Africa is yet to develop a comprehensive open banking framework, several countries have created roadmaps for digital transformation and open banking and a few African countries have emerged as pioneers in open banking regulatory framework. In Nigeria, for example, open banking initiatives have been launched including the Nigerian Open Banking API Framework and the Open Banking Nigeria Project. In early 2021, the Central Bank of Nigeria issued the regulatory framework for open banking in Nigeria, defining how data sharing should occur with open banking, including requirements for accessing data and APIs. Now, These initiatives are designed to enable third-party developers build applications and services on top of their existing banking infrastructure with the goal of increasing competition and innovation in the financial sector. In Kenya, the government launched an open banking working group to explore the potential of this new financial model to develop policies and standards for open banking. In December 2020, the Central Bank of Kenya released a draft five-year digitalization plan to overhaul the country's payment industry. The document strongly supports open banking and stresses the importance of regulation, stating that the Central Bank of Kenya will work to define the standards for API development, including risk management frameworks. At the same time, the Kenyan National Treasury and Planning Department is drafting a policy for digital finance that will address developing open banking infrastructure, ensuring consumer protection, and creating financial system regulation. In South Africa, the Financial Sector Conduct Authority released draft regulations for open banking, which would enable third party providers to access customer data and build new financial services. In my home country, Ghana, the central bank recognized the potential benefits of open banking and has taken steps to encourage its adoption. In 2019, the Bank of Ghana launched its Payment Systems and Services Act, which includes provisions for open banking. The act provides a regulatory framework for the provision of payment services, including the use of open banking APIs. The Bank of Ghana has also established the Payment Systems Department, which is responsible for overseeing the implementation of the act and promoting the development of payment systems in the country. Now, these are just a few examples examples of the exciting developments happening in open banking across Africa. As this industry continues to grow and evolve, it has the potential to transform the financial landscape in many countries across the continent. Now, Even though open banking has many potential benefits for Africa, there are also significant challenges that must be addressed if this new financial model is to be successful. One of the main challenges facing open banking in Africa is the lack of digital infrastructure and connectivity. Many countries still lack reliable internet access, which can make it difficult for people to access digital financial services, but this can limit the potential of open banking to reach the underserved communities and improve financial inclusion. In many African countries, banks are reluctant to share customer data with third-party providers due to several reasons, including concerns around data privacy and security, all of which make it difficult for fintech companies to develop innovative products and services. The lack of infrastructure for open banking can also be seen in the limited availability of open banking banking APIs. Now, although some banks in Africa have started to provide open banking APIs to third-party providers, there is still a lack of standardization and interoperability across different banks and countries. Another challenge is the lack of regulatory frameworks and standards for open banking. In many African countries, there are still no clear guidelines for how open banking should be regulated and governed. This can create uncertainty and confusion for both financial institutions and third-party developers and may limit the growth of this emerging industry. Now, despite the challenges, there are also many opportunities for open banking in Africa. For example, by enabling new forms of digital payments, open banking can help reduce the cost and complexity of financial transactions. This can be especially important in rural areas where traditional banking services may be limited or unavailable. Open banking can also provide new opportunities for businesses and entrepreneurs in Africa. By enabling access to more data and financial services, open banking can help level the playing field for small businesses and startups and provide new avenues for growth and expansion. And finally, open banking can also help to increase financial literacy and education in Africa. By making financial services more accessible and transparent, open banking can empower individuals and communities to make better financial decisions and to take control of their financial future. So to conclude, 
Open banking has the potential to transform the financial landscape in Africa and to provide new opportunities for individuals, businesses, and communities across the continent. While there are certainly challenges to be addressed, the benefits of open banking are clear and many African countries are already taking steps to embrace this new financial model. Now, as we look forward into the future of open banking, it's important to remember that this is an emerging industry and there is still much work to be done. However, with the right policy infrastructure and partnerships in place, open banking has the potential to be a powerful force for financial inclusion, innovation, and growth in Africa and beyond. I hope you found this video valuable. And if you did, remember to hit the like button and leave me a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. <music>